Turf war between Taliban and Pakistan backed Haqqani network over government formation in Afghanistan. Pakistan wants to plant its proxies in the seat of power. India today has learned that ISI is pushing for Mullah Hassan Akhun to lead the government. Take a look. A mere 20 days after it ousted the elected government in Afghanistan, the Afghans are getting a teaser of what the future holds for them. All this happening when Taliban is still struggling to put a government together. At a time when all focus must be on putting the country in order, the Taliban is occupied in firefighting factional fights with Pakistan's ISI-backed Haqqani network. The Pakistan government, seeing an opportunity in crisis, is busy planting its proxies in the seat of power. हमारे पास तो मुल्ला बरादरान जेल में थे जी अमेरिकन ने कहा कि इनको जेल से निकालो और हमारे साथ मजाक की टेबल पे लाओ मुल्ला बरादरान जेल में थे कई ये तालिबान लीडर जो टॉप हैं वो पैदा पाकिस्तान में हुए पढ़े पाकिस्तान में इसमें तो पाकिस्तान की खिदमत हैं कि इनको हमने तालीम दी और अब भी कई पढ़ रहे होंगे इंडिया टुडे हैज लर्नड दैट पाकिस्तान आई एस आई हैज बीन पुशिंग for Mullah Hassan Akhund, the head of the Rehbari Shura, to lead the government. Akhund is said to be close to ISI. But that is not all. The ISI is pushing for Shirajuddin Haqqani as Interior Minister and Mullah Yaqub to be the Defence Minister of the Taliban government. All with an aim to be in the driver's seat of the government in Afghanistan. So far, the Taliban appears to have succumbed to Haqqani Network's demands. The Taliban have already announced it's inviting Pakistan, China, Russia, Iran, Turkey and Qatar for the government formation. Pakistan clearly is trying to send out a message to the West that it is the handler of Taliban in Afghanistan. With Abhishek Bhalla in New Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. It is the last stronghold of resistance in Afghanistan, but is the fall of Panjshir now imminent? The Taliban claim complete control of the valley. Fighters of the organization unfurled the Taliban flag at the governor's office in Panjshir and posed right under the portrait of Ahmed Massoud. The resistance front, however, has rejected Taliban's claim, declaring the fight is still on. The battle for Panjshir is in its final stages. The last anti-Taliban bastion witnessing its probable endgame. This is the defining image of Taliban's claim of conquering Panjshir. Taliban fighters posing outside the governor's house in this outpost, even hoisting the Islamic Emirate flag at the governor's residence, trying to put a seal of approval on their victory claim. The Taliban also claimed to have captured more US-made Black Hawk helicopters which were used by caretaker President Amrullah Saleh and Northern Alliance leader Ahmad Massoud. The Taliban claim they offered options for talks to the resistance forces which went unheeded. But resistance forces have denied the Taliban's claims, claiming that their fighters are still holding key positions high up in the Panjshir Mountains. Massoud's spokesperson spoke to Turkish TRT World Channel minutes before the Taliban claimed that they had captured Panjshir. He said the resistance is still in an advantageous position. Right now we're in an advantage. We're, we have the strategic uh, positions in Panjshir. The Soviets entered Panjshir more than nine times, but did they, were they victorious? No, they weren't. And at the end of the day, the Taliban are not going to be victorious in this battle. The Taliban claimed to have inflicted heavy casualties on resistance forces. Fahim Dashti, the spokesperson of the resistance force and key aide of Ahmad Massoud, has reportedly been killed in the Panjshir battle. The 
Taliban blamed it on factional fighting in the resistance. In another blow to resistance forces, its chief commander, Saleh Mohammad, was also reportedly killed by the Taliban. Ahmad Masood's nephew, General Abdul Udud Zare, too was reportedly killed in Rokha district of Panjshir. He was involved in negotiations with the Taliban on the future of Afghanistan. Another of Masood's nephews, Munib Amiri, was also reportedly killed in a gunfight. As the battle intensified, resistance forces chief Ahmad Masood has been in Tajikistan for the last three days, while former Vice President Amrullah Saleh is still holding on in Panjshir at an undisclosed location and believed for now to be safe. His key aide told India today that he has not abandoned his people. With Hikmatullah Ahmad Zadi in Kabul, Bureau Report, India Today. The Taliban regime is back in Afghanistan and so is the medieval mindset. It seems like curtains for women's freedom. Images from Kabul's Avicenna University show women being made to sit separately from men's students. Several brave women took to streets demanding equal rights. Here's a report. The good news. Colleges have opened in Afghanistan. The bad news. Taliban's repressive regime is on full display. The first visuals coming out of Afghanistan on the first day of studies at Kabul's Avicenna University were quite representative of what the future holds. Men and women students were separated with help of curtains. They are no longer allowed to sit together. This was when the Taliban vowed to treat women differently, despite a history of oppression. On Monday, a Taliban spokesperson took to Twitter and posted this video. Women can be seen holding the Taliban flag, sloganeering and demanding religious hijab and marching for the Islamic Emirate. The spokesperson Zabihullah Mujahid said, women are actually insisting to make hijab mandatory for everyone. A claim hard to digest given the protests taking place. Women have hit the streets of Kabul, demanding equal rights and representation in the Taliban-led government. These brave women were confronted by armed militants and there are reports that they were tear-gassed. We just want the same rights as men or the same concessions that we had under the government of Ashraf Ghani. We want to have rights under the Taliban government also. If not at 100%, if not at 80%, then at least 50% should be given to us. Women say their only goal is to maintain some hard-won rights that they had before the Taliban takeover. The Islamic Emirate Authority announced that it will introduce a cabinet that under no circumstances will women be a part of it. When they said this, then of course, those of us who have studied, who have had an education, who have played a role in society, we fought back. We want women and men to always maintain their rights. It's not gender specific for us. For us, what matters is for everyone to have the right authority and rights. Taliban rule was marked by violent punishments and a ban on schooling or work for women and girls. Many Afghans and foreign governments fear a return of such practices. And the first signals coming out of Kabul are not very encouraging. Bureau Report, India Today. Fresh and fighting in Amadmi Party months before 2022 Punjab polls, supporters of Sangdur MP Bhagwan Khan have been pitching for his elevation as the Punjab Chief Ministerial face. Large number of supporters have been camping outside leader of opposition Harpal Chima's residence, demanding the same. Several party workers and leaders have been trying to amass support for the comedian turned politician. The Bhagwan Khan camp has demanded that the party declare Chief Ministerial face as soon as possible, as failure to do so would result in losses in 2022 assembly elections however sources have told india today that bhagwan man may drop a bombshell if he is not anointed within five days <laughs>
है कि पार्टी नहीं मंग कर रहे ये लोगों की आवाज़ दस रहे हैं कि सानू लोग ऐ कहें सो लोगों की आवाज़ न पार मतलब पार्टी तक पहुँचा इन्हों का भी फर्ज है मेरा भी फर्ज है पा पार्टी जो भी जो भी फैसला लूगी वो खड़ा गे Upping the ante against the centre, farm leaders are holding yet another Mahapanchayat in Haryana's Karnal district. They are going to be first assembling at the Anaj Mandi and then proceed to Ghera, the mini secretariat. Haryana government, on the other hand, has suspended the internet services in Karnal, Kurukshetra, Kaithal, Jin, and Panipat for the entire day. In addition, the government has restricted bulk message services and imposed Section 144 on Karnal, barring public gatherings to maintain the law and order situation. On Sunday, farm leaders hosted another Kisan Mahapanchayat in UP's Muzaffarnagar. Where thousands turned up. Farm leader Rakesh Tiket even warned the centre of intensifying the farm stir and accused the government of selling the nation for corporates. The farmers are gathering in Karnal to protest against 28th August police lati charge and Karnal SDM Ayu Sinha's controversial orders directing cops to break protesting farmers' heads. सरकार वो करते हैं कि हम उसकी वोट कितनी उसको दिलवा सकते हैं तो भी सरकार हमारा काम करेगी तो देश की जनता ने उनकी सरकार बनवाई और ये है कि उसकी वोट कितनी कट जाए तो भी वो सरकार काम करेगी तो सरकार कौन से तरीके से काम करना चाहती है तो सरकार को बता दे तय कर दे मतलब ऐसा तो नहीं होगा कि जनता यहाँ पे धरने देगी वो सरकार बातचीत भी नहीं करेगी तो हम भी जाएंगे गाँव के लोग को अपना बताएंगे सरकार नहीं मान रही और सरकार इन इन संस्थाओं को जो पब्लिक सेक्टर की संस्थाएं हैं उनको बेच रही है अब जनता नाराज होगी तो वो वोट नहीं देने की जनता खुश होगी तो वोट दे देगी तो सरकारें क्यों जनता को नाराज कर रही है Let's now listen to Karnal SDM who ordered cops to beat up protesters during the August 28 agitation of farmers in Karnal. <laughs> इससे कोई भी पैदावार इसी तरह का स्पष्ट कर देता हूँ सर छोड़ देता हूँ नहीं मैं डिप्यूटी मैजिस्ट्रेट और लिखित में बता रहा हूँ कितने लड़क मार रहा हूँ कोई डाउट मारोगे कोई जाएगा इसको ब्रीच करके ठीक है यहाँ पे यहाँ से एक बंदा नहीं जाना चाहिए यार मेरे पास आए नहीं यार और अगर केयर ना तो उसका सर फूटा होना चाहिए किसी का ठीक है केयर है ना आपको ठीक है Mom the Banerjee's nephew and TMC General Secretary Abhishek Banerjee appeared before the Enforcement Directorate in Delhi. He was grilled by the agency for more than seven hours in the coal smuggling case. After hours of intense grilling, Abhishek Banerjee said anyone who fights against the BJP is being harassed. And this case has risen out of Kolkata. Here's more. <laughs> Mamta's nephew and TMC member of parliament, Abhishek Banerjee was questioned by the ED in Delhi for more than seven hours on Monday. The enforcement directorate believes that Banerjee is involved in a money laundering case linked to a coal pilferage scam. After hours of intense grilling, Abhishek Banerjee said the TMC is going to be going to all the states where there is a BJP government. He's also challenged the government to use the ED and the CBI against the party. BJP's tyranny will be defeated. Let BJP put all its might, vigor, threat, resources, mind my words, their resources is going to fall flat. Hi, hum aur zor zabardasti ke zor zabardasti ke saath. आपके खिलाफ लड़ाई करेंगे और हम वो हर राज्य में जाएंगे जहां आप लोकतंत्र का हत्या किया है। According to the ED, two companies of links with Abhishek Banerjee and his family received a protection fund of around 4.37 crore rupees. The funds were released by a construction company through an accused in the coal smuggling case. Mamata Banerjee called the actions against Abhishek Banerjee vendetta politics. कोयला चुरी के इतने शुद्ध तीनों मूल का धोल ना होगे, तीनों मूल दायित्व कोयला ना होए, कोयला तुम्हारे सीआईए से भेद दायित्व सेंट्रल मिनिस्ट्री माथा है देखो, ये टा स्टेट मिनिस्ट्री ना होए, तुम्हारे मिनिस्ट्री राखी कौन चिलो? अमी एक दो जन मंत्री नाम बोलते पड़ी, 
BJP meanwhile has defended the ED's action against the TMC's first family. While the chief minister ranted against what she called motivated interrogation, her arch rival Shivindu Adhikari was granted interim relief by the Calcutta High Court. Adhikari had been summoned by the West Bengal CID in a case relating to the death of his security guard in 2018. The leader of opposition in Bengal does not need to appear before the CID right now. Sivindu's guard had died in 2018 after he reportedly shot himself. His wife had raised doubts on the suicide angle and filed a police complaint in July seeking reinvestigation of her husband's death. Bureau report, India Today. It took 50 years for India to win a test at Oval, but when it came, it had the hallmark of Team India written all over it. From being bowled out for 191 to putting the match beyond England's reach was an incredible feat. And now India is looking at fourth series win on English soil. But how did India make things happen at the Oval? Here's a report. At 117 for six on day one, it seemed all over for India. But in came Lord Shardul and resurrected the Indian batting like it has happened so often in the past. The two. Oh. That's a great 191 all out seemed a little too less on a wicket like the one that was on offer at the Oval. But bowlers had England on the ropes at 62 for 5. And it's a big one. Milan was looking good. It's a lovely catch. Still, England managed to take a 99-run lead, which was quite sizable considering how the Indian batting has fared so far in the series. Beautiful shot. 1979. But the hallmark of this team has been its ability to come back whenever they have their backs against the wall. That will take Pujara. Rohit continued his supreme form to score his maiden overseas century in tests before Pujara and Virat also chipped in. Don't think that's anyone. Once again, Team India was in a spot of bother, but once again, Shardul Thakur came up with his heroics and together with Rishabh Pant allowed India to set England a record 368 run target. England had a bright start, something that has eluded them in the recent past. And it just races away to the boundary. But once again, India fought back with a flurry of wickets in the second session of the day to put victory beyond England. Bumra brought his experience into play and Jadeja exploited the conditions relentlessly to hand India their first test win at the Oval in 50 years. With that win, India also took an unassailable 2-1 lead in the five-test series and are already smelling their fourth series victory on English soil. Sports Bureau, India Today. Unbelievable stuff here from... It's a wrap from me, Chair Tina Rula, on this bulletin. For further news and updates, don't forget to log on to indiatoday.in or go ahead and download our app. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your time.